Guys and gals, welcome to this episode of the Outdoor Gear Review where it is time to take a look at another piece of military surplus. Some years ago, I reviewed this product and I wanted to update that review. This is a very interesting piece of military surplus that dates back to 1964 and possibly even before that. This is the United States Military Pneumatic Air Mattress. Just in case you do not know, pneumatic means to like contain air or to be operated by air. Before going any further in this episode, hit the thumbs up because it does help the channel. It's a great way to support the channel and to help it grow. Thanks everybody. Everything that I stated in my previous review about this air mat stands true to this day. This is an excellent product, but just because it's an excellent product doesn't mean that it's a product for you. There are some pros and cons to this mat, all of which we will go over in this episode. You all can see here that the size of this mat is not bad. It's roughly 11 inches by five and a half inches. The weight of this is 3.2 pounds. So yes, it is heavy. For an air mattress, it is heavy. But once I inflate it, you will understand why it's so heavy. Speaking of which, why don't we go ahead and do that now. This mat takes a very long time to inflate. Seriously, folks, if you purchase one of these, you may want to consider an air pump or something. I mean, this is a workout. This is going to take, I don't know, maybe three, four minutes to inflate. Inflating the pad took roughly three minutes and I had to stop three different times to do it. While inflating the pad is a chore, deflating the pad is not. It's a very simple process that goes quickly. Again, everyone, this is a rather large air mattress. You can see here that you have the six large baffles. Now, with this air mat, this is an insulated product. And since I've mentioned that, let's go over the measurements and also the materials. When it's inflated, it is 26 inches wide and it is 72 inches long and it offers a thickness of five inches. The color of this pad is olive drab green, but oftentimes in pictures and in video, it looks gray, but it's not. While this is an insulated pad, there's no telling what the R value is. When it comes to the materials, what you have here is a nylon exterior that's coated with rubber. On the inside, in the baffles, the insulation is polyester, and that's what keeps the cold air from rising up through the pad. Hopping onto the pad here to show you all just how big it is. This pad was made for individuals around six foot. So if you're shorter than six foot, you're good. If you're taller than that, your legs will stick off the end. Now laying on this, it is absolutely incredible. It really is. With this pad, everyone, there are numerous elements coming together to make this comfortable. First off, you have the five inches of cushion. Then you have the materials themselves, inner and outer. Many years ago when I reviewed this, I loved it then, and I still love it to this day. Laying on my side, it's perfect. Laying on my back, perfect. At no point in time do I feel the rocks underneath, with the exception of sitting up like this. When you're sitting down, just your butt on the pad, you can feel the rocks, but once you get the weight of your entire body on here, you will feel absolutely nothing. Talk about using this pad for a second. On top of it, printed on the material itself, are what is known as dummy instructions. It tells you the top, it tells you how to inflate it. It states here that you need to inflate it and then sit on it to test it. If your butt is barely touching the ground, then it's properly inflated. It says top right here. Why does it say that? That's because of this valve. No pressure should be put on this. This is the weakest point for this entire system. I mentioned before that these mats go all the way back to the 60s, all the way back to the Vietnam era. When they were actually introduced, I do not know. When they were discontinued, I do not know. I have seen dates on these ranging from 1985 all the way to 1964. It was in the 80s when this pad was issued a NATO stock number, but prior to that, there's very little information about these mats. Soldiers often refer to these as the rubber bitch, <laughs> which is pretty funny. That's a great way to describe this mat. <laughs> While it is heavy, it is cumbersome, this was an excellent product that soldiers liked. Yes, it was heavy, it took quite a bit of work to get it inflated, but once they did, they had a very good night's sleep on their hands. And they could use this in any sort of environment, and they did. Talking about the rubber coating here, it absorbs water. So you have to be careful. You have to keep it out of the rain. You have to keep your wet shoes and whatnot away from it because any bit of moisture 
Even sweat will soak into that rubber, and it does take quite a bit of time for it to dry. This has lasted for absolute ever. I've never seen one of these where the rubber coating is coming off. That is incredibly impressive. Even the models from the 60s, the rubber is in good shape. Talking about availability for a second, you could still find these at military surplus stores and online, say, at like eBay. That's my favorite place to get military surplus, and you can even find these in brand new condition. Price, right around 40 bucks for one, $80 for two. Is that a good price? Is that a fair price? In my opinion, yes. Absolutely. If you go out to buy one of these, I recommend that you pay attention to the listings, especially when it comes to condition. What is the condition of the pad? These things are super old. Many of them were used all around the world. So you need to make sure that there haven't been repairs. You have to make sure that there aren't leaks. If the seller doesn't state the condition, ask questions. That is what I recommend. I've had this thing for <laughs> maybe eight years, something like that. I've used it in all sorts of conditions and I love it, I really do. Just because I love it though, doesn't mean that I want to carry it with me all the time and on all trips. Again, this thing is a monster. I mean, it really is. This, this is one of the most burly sleeping mats, air mats that I have. It's wide, it's fairly long, it's heavy. Uh, it takes a lot of work to inflate it. And those are the biggest cons with this product. The pros, of course, it's super comfortable. It's very inexpensive. It's extremely durable. You can lay on your back, on your side, on your stomach, you will be comfortable. It, without a doubt, has an awesome military surplus cool factor to it. It's made in the US and it's tough. It just keeps on going. Talking about it being insulated, I have used this many times in the winter and it works very well. In really, really cold conditions, I would recommend a secondary pad underneath, but that's the case with any air mattress. By the way, everyone, we should talk about the inflation valve. This is known as a snap lock mouthpiece. It works very well. The only thing is there's no stopper in this. So if you need to take a break or anything like that, you have to put your thumb over it or put the plug in. So no matter what, when it comes time to seal this up, a little bit of air does escape and that's okay. With this mat, it's not designed to be extremely taut. It's not designed to be overinflated. It needs to have just a little bit of bend to it, just a little bit of give, and that's what makes it so comfortable. If you overinflate, it will be not as comfortable. I've had no issues with this mat leaking. It's never developed any holes or anything like that, even when I used it straight on the ground. To wrap up this review, the question is, should you go out and buy one of these? And that's a complicated question with a complicated answer. It really does depend on what you want. Do you like military surplus? If so, I would say sure. If you want a mat that's super, super comfortable, I would say sure. Using this for car camping, absolutely, especially if you have some sort of air pump. For backpacking purposes, well, if you like to carry a lot of weight, go for it. If you're concerned about size and weight, I would say no. This is a heavy, large pad. There are many lighter products out there. And I think for the most part, that wraps it up. Ultimately, everyone, this is an air mattress that I love. I think this is a very, very cool product. You all have seen me using this for many, many years now, and it continues to go strong. I've used this in every sort of condition that you can imagine, in a tent, on the ground, under a tarp. It just keeps on going, and it's such a cool product. I wish there was more history about this available online. I did quite a bit of searching about this product and I found very little information. In fact, on YouTube, I believe I'm the only one with a video on this, ever. There's one video, it's mine, <laughs> that's it. I guess I should say there's two videos now, including this one. This is one of those rare products, a rare military gym that many people just do not know about. It's a cool product, that's for sure. And the thing is this, folks, if you are interested in one of these, you should buy it now because these will not be available forever. The shelf life is ticking on these. Eventually the materials will fail. So if you're interested in one, get one now. For this episode of the Outdoor Gear Review, that pretty much wraps it up. Everyone, what do you all think about this air mattress? Is it military cool or is it simply too heavy? comment down below. Also, I'd like to hear from some of my military buddies. What do you all think about this? Would you use one of these today? Be well, folks. Take care. Strength and honor. I'll talk to you soon. Bye, everybody.